Well, we have here uh, Brother Jeff Mazira. Brother Jeff is uh, a historian well known among the Bible students. He, he also he's also a collector of uh, publications and material related with the Truth Movement. And uh, it is a pleasure to have you here. Happy to be here again. And we are going to talk today about uh, the Great Pyramid. I mean. What's the importance of the Great Pyramid in the Bible Students Movement? Uh, how this idea, uh, you know, uh, became part of, of some of the doctrines? I mean, could you tell us a little bit well, about... Well, first of all, the, the importance of it is, is the ideas that it conveys. And uh, much of the idea it conveys is, is basically what we call the plan of God. And, and so, as you can see on the chart back here, uh, you could see the idea of this descending passage is that man is steeped in sin cool. and and it'll just lead sin just leads to death and, and God provided a way out he provided the Jews a law but they couldn't keep it and so you could see this would symbolize the law age but it was blocked by a giant granite stone and so since man uh, his course only leads to death the law only leads to death the only way out of this was through Christ and, and the ransom is represented, especially here, and inside the grotto there's a stone that's in the shape of a lamb's head. And this is a natural stone that is, is on the natural plane here between these different layers, and the Great Pyramid was erected around this spot. And, and this leads to? And this leads up to what I would say would be a symbol of the resurrection of life. And so for all those who... Um, are unbelievers today. I, I would see them as they would go along a highway of holiness to a, a perfection level, to an earthly perfection. And the reason is because of the perfectly horizontal plane that it's on. But this other way is uh, a grand gallery, they call it, that's uh, very high and it's uh, seven times higher than the rest of the uh, other uh, tunnels around it. and as if you go upwards there's all these little handhelds and they're all in the shape of a cross and when you get to this uh, King's chamber here I, that would be the heavenly resurrection and inside is a an empty coffin yeah. it's a coffin without a lid a coffin that never had a mummy or a body within and this reminds us of Christ's uh, resurrection when the tomb was empty and all that was left behind were the folded clothes um, and it, it, there is something also related with the size of the coffin that is... Yes, the coffin is exactly the size of the dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant. And, and in the tabernacle construction, it was the Ark of the Covenant where God's presence was located. And, and this illustrated the spiritual nature of those who, could, who will enter through a life of sacrifice, uh, a, a spiritual reward. So you're suggesting that this... Uh, way upwards is a, a difficult way that that would uh, resemble the narrow way in which the consecrated right. ones walk. And, and the only way up is to hold onto these handhelds which are in the shape of a cross. Uh, those handhelds uh, are are they uh, they're on both sides of and they're, original, and they're original to the Great Pyramid. To yes. the Great Pyramid. Yeah. And, and in the tabernacle construction when the priest would go into the Most Holy you know, we think of the Ark of the Covenant, you know, from the Indiana Jones movies, mm -hmm. you know. But this was a special thing. It was only something they saw once a year, only the high priest saw it. And when they sprinkled blood on it, they sprinkled it on the Ark of the Covenant and before it. They sprinkled the blood in the shape of a cross. Oof. And of course, we see from Scripture that this was an illustration of what mankind needed was Jesus' blood shed on the cross. That's really interesting. So... Um, and then we have this pictorial representation of the uh, plan of God. Uh, we also understand the sun got to the point of measuring the you know the length of those passages. Do you think that I mean does that indicate specific years or what? Well, what's well, your take there was a gentleman from, uh, named Piazzi Smythe. In, in the uh, 1860s, 70s, 80s, he visited the pyramid and ended up writing a book on what he thought proved that um, the British system and, and the Christian God was the one true God. 
and he saw God's handiwork in in the symbolism of of the passageway system. You, you said that the British system. Would, well, what were we uh, talking about? The he was also trying to suggest that the metric system that they were trying to bring in at the time uh -huh. was not the complete system, and he was looking more at what they call a pyramid inch. Okay, so somehow the pyramid inch was related with with some measurements in the Bible. Is that right. what you're saying? Right. And so there were a lot of Christians at the time who were p picking up these ideas and they were trying to run with it and trying to see how far they could take it. There's a gentleman, a Lutheran minister, a very prominent Lutheran minister, Joseph Seitz. And Joseph Seitz wrote this book on the pyramid showing how uh, it proved that the God of the Christians, the God of the Jews, was a true God uh, of the universe based on the symbolisms that he found in the pyramid. Now this Lutheran minister, Joseph Seitz, was the expositor of many books. And his book on the apocalypse is quoted and, and reprinted over and over again today. So you say that those ideas, uh, Russell did not come up with those no. ideas. No, these ideas were ideas that were throughout Christianity at the time. Here's another example. Here's a little booklet here from the Advent Christian Times. Christian? Colgrove. Okay, I mean, uh, Clinton Colgrove. Oh, Clinton Colgrove. The Great Pyramid in its relation to scripture and science. Does this predate uh, Brother Russell? Uh, this one is uh, 1877, so yes. Now Nelson Barber, who Brother Russell received a lot of his ideas from, was publishing articles on the pyramid before he even met Brother Russell. George Storrs, who published the Bible Examiner for many years, also published articles on the Great Pyramid and the Bible George before Brother Russell. Now there are brethren from Brother Russell's day, the Edgars, for example. They actually went to the pyramids and did their own measurements with, with steel rods so they could be much more accurate. And there are Christians today who also uh, teach these ideas. For example, here's Noah Hutchings, the Great Pyramid Prophecy in Stone. He's an evangelical Christian in Oklahoma City. This is something new, so yes, those ideas are yeah. still being uh, taught by uh, many uh, Christians. Now what they were trying to find from the pyramid were measurements that might take them to what could possibly be the end of the world. But uh, unfortunately the last real concrete date, if you could get a date from, from the pyramid, would be oddly enough 1914. And a lot of the Christians not only Brother Russell, but the Christians of his day, when they were looking forward to 1914, or 1917, 1918, they thought not that Jesus would return in that year, but that something would happen to bring the Ottoman Empire to its knees and bring Israel back as a nation. So they were not looking for the end of the world. I mean, at least Brother Russell was not. No, he was... He, um, We'll, we'll get into it in another video. We'll talk about the origin of the 1914 uh -huh. doctrine, and we'll go into a lot of the details and some interesting historical facts about that. So, so stay tuned on that story. But the, the chronological framework mm -hmm. that Barber and, and Brother Russell had was already in formation before the Pyramid Doctrine came around. Mm -hmm. And I would say even 40 years before Charles Taze Russell even began the Washtor magazine, that chronological framework was was finalized a full decade before he was born. So the dates do not come from the no the dates the were before the idea of the pyramid in the Bible came along. And what they found in it were what they saw as chronological confirm confirmations of what they had already okay. found from the Bible, 1914 as an example. And could you please explain Isaiah 19:19 to us just to. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we have it right here. Huh? Uh, it talks about the this altar to the Lord being at the, the border thereof and in the midst thereof. And that whatever this altar was, it was going to be a sign and a witness for the Lord. So if we would look at the De Nile Delta here, where the Giza Plateau is located, it, it is literally in the midst of the land of Egypt. And it was at the, the border between upper and lower uh, Egypt. And so the description of the pyramid fits the signs, the, the clues that were given in the text for a sign and a witness. And if we look at the symbolism of the passageways, it fits with uh, the scriptural uh, need that
that we're given for a Savior. It shows our sinfulness of our sin, our degradation, degradation of sin. And I also read something interesting about the word Giza. It seems that uh, in ancient uh, in Egypt, Egyptian, I guess, the, it meant something like border. Yes. Yeah. Is it Egyptian, ancient Egyptian? I think so. I think. Or some some ancient something language. Something like that. And so the assumption, just to end our conversation, our, our conversation conversation on this topic, the assumption or the general assumption is that God gave the instructions on how to build the pyramid for a future purpose. Am I correct in saying correct. that? And and it is the idea that it was given to one of the sons of Noah, okay. Shem. If you look at and date the the timing of the pyramid, and you look at chronology of scripture, it takes you right back to the time of right after the flood. And you can even see from the um, different uh, passageway systems, the air passageway systems, it would point to one pointed to the dragon star, the descending passage. Mm -hmm. The, the Draco be, being the dragon or, mm -hmm. or the uh, symbol of Satan and the other pointed to one of the constellations where God's presence was and so or, or, or was described in in a poetic so, form mm -hmm. and so the Pleiades I guess. the Pleiades and so the um, uh, idea is that um, you can even date it from from those passageways and it shows both again that descent into sin and again the necessity of a savior but is this like a doctrine that all Bible students have to believe? No, actually no. Uh, most of the brethren, most of the Bible student brethren do believe this. Yeah. Right. There are some who say, yes, the pyramid's a good idea. We see the symbolism in the passages, but they don't see the measurements, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah. Some don't see the pyramid at all. Zayed's but there's still a unity of belief of, again, the necessity for a savior the ransom doctrine, our Lord's death, and the hope of resurrection for all men. So if I, if I, in my studies, if I don't believe that the pyramid is the fulfillment of Isaiah 1919, uh, you would still see me as a brother. We'll get you straight sometime. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of Go course. <laughs> well, thank you very much for this wonderful explanation on, on the meaning of the Great Pyramid and its... Uh, possible fulfillment of Isaiah 1919. God, God bless. bless.